According to industry forecasts, the next decade will see a tremendous increase in the demand for electrical power. To meet this demand, experts of the electric utility industry realize that one of the great challenges of the 70s will be to prevent electric power interruptions by increasing the reliability of power systems components. In a power transmission system, the ability of a transformer to withstand the effects of short circuit through fault currents is critical to power systems reliability. General Electric's power transformer department in Pittsfield, Massachusetts and medium transformer department in Rome, Georgia have long been engaged in a continuing program to investigate the effects of short circuit action on transformers. More recently, this program has been expanded to include full-scale short circuit testing at the High Power Laboratory in Philadelphia. In the first phase of this integrated short circuit program, sophisticated computer programs were developed to calculate the detailed forces generated in transformers by through-fault currents and to predict the effects of these forces on windings and insulation structures. Other programs were developed to explore the advantages of different winding and tap arrangements on individual transformer designs, and still others to design winding insulation and clamping structures to reduce the effects of the forces generated. In the second phase of the short circuit program, a series of model transformers were built and tested to develop the instrumentation necessary to map flux fields and measure forces and to verify the analytical calculations of phase one empirically. The tests were performed on a short circuit experimental transformer with standard coil construction and continuous disc copper windings. For the first two tests, the model's special clamps were adjusted to a normal 1,200 pounds per square inch clamping pressure. Power was applied by discharging a bank of capacitors through the inner winding, while the outer winding was short-circuited, producing a first half-cycle current configuration analogous to that of an actual short circuit. The test films you are about to see were recorded by high-speed cameras. An arrow will indicate the area to watch. On the second flash of the arrow, the short circuit will be applied. At a peak current of 93 times normal, the short circuit action caused considerable flexing of the coil. In the next test, the four center sections of the outer coil are tapped out. This will tend to alter the force patterns in such a way that the upper portion of the coil will attempt to move upward, while the lower portion will attempt to move downward. On the second flash of the arrows, the short circuit will be applied. At a peak current of 180 times normal, the forces generated tended to split the coil from the center. In the next two tests, the jack screws on the special clamps were adjusted to only 120 pounds per square inch, or 10% of the normal preload. In the first test, the peak current will reach 146 times normal. The reduced clamping preload resulted in considerably more movement throughout the coil with some permanent distortion of both the third sections above and below the center brake. In the final test, the peak current will reach 173 times normal. Again, with the reduced clamping preload, movement of the entire winding has been very severe, with permanent deformation seen in several of the sections. Knowing that the ultimate test of short circuit capability must be demonstrated on full-scale production transformers, the medium transformer department utilized all of the knowledge gained from the earlier phases in the preparation of a series of standard production design transformers for staged short circuit testing in phase three. One unit on which tests were conducted was a single phase transformer rated 1667 kVA 26.4 kV to 13090 volts Y with 5.9% impedance. This unit was unique in that the high and low voltage windings on leg A were of the continuous disc type, while those on leg B were of the barrel type. Both windings were of standard design and utilized aluminum conductor. 
The transformer tank was equipped with a special plexiglass window to allow the movement of the outer coils to be documented on high-speed film and separate high and low voltage bushings to allow each leg to be tested independently. The completed unit was then shipped to the high power laboratory. Each leg was independently tested by connecting the outer winding to a 60 hertz laboratory power source capable of a short circuit output of 5.25 million kVA asymmetrical. And the inner winding was connected to a breaker which was used to apply the short circuit. The tests you are about to see are of 10 cycle duration, fully offset at 100% voltage and on the maximum force tap connection. The first test was conducted on the leg with the barrel windings. The asymmetrical current will reach a peak of 45 times normal in the first half cycle, and this will be marked by the second flash of the arrow. The flapping action you see in the collars is most probably caused by an expansion and contraction of the windings radially, forcing oil to strike the collars in a bellows type action. There is no visible movement of the conductors or clamping structure. This same test was repeated on the leg with the disc windings. The asymmetrical current will again reach a peak of 45 times normal on the second flash of the arrows. The forces generated exerted a splitting type action, but the clamping structures prevented appreciable movement of the coil. In order to establish a short circuit withstand capability test for production transformers, methods of failure detection had to be developed that were sensitive enough to detect incipient failure without impairing the functional life of the units tested. In this test and in subsequent tests, we conducted recurrent surge tests before and after each short circuit. This technique appears to be very promising in that even the slightest changes in the physical configuration of the transformer coils would change the surge impedance of the transformer enough to produce dramatic changes in the recurrent surge waveforms. However, we also found that these waveforms could be easily changed by extraneous factors, so we are continuing to develop this technique. When the short circuit tests were completed, the transformer was returned to the Rome plant where all standard electrical tests were repeated. The unit passed all tests, including ANSI full and chop wave impulse tests at 100% voltage. The transformer was then disassembled and the coils inspected. No indication of any movement or shear could be found, nor was there any indication of collapse in any portion of the windings. The next series of short circuit tests was conducted on an oil-filled three-phase load tap changing transformer with aluminum windings, rated 5,000 kVA, 34.4 kV to 13090 volts Y, with 6.6% impedance. This unit was also equipped with special plexiglass windows. This time we used three high-speed cameras so that we could record the short circuit action at the top the middle and the bottom of the high voltage coils simultaneously. Each leg of the transformer underwent two tests of 10 cycle duration fully offset at 100% voltage. The first test, with the tap changer in the all taps out position, making the tap sections of the winding inactive, and the second, with the tap changer in the all taps in position, making the entire winding active. This is a high-speed film record of the top of the center leg during the first test with the tap changer in the all taps out position. Again, an arrow will indicate the area to watch. On the second flash of the arrow, the short circuit will be applied and the asymmetrical current will reach a peak of 37.5 times normal in the first half cycle. The closeness of the camera made the movement at the top of the coil appear very large. However, when we measured it on freeze frame, it was less than 1 16th of an inch. This film records the action at the top of the right hand leg during the second test, with the tap changer in the all taps in position. On the second flash of the arrow, the asymmetrical current will reach a peak of over 40 times normal in the first half cycle. The 
only action was in the collars. There was no visible movement of the coil or clamping structure. This film records the action at the middle portion of the right hand leg during the first test with the tap changer in the all taps out position. Although the movement in the coil appears very large, it was measured again to be less than one sixteenth of an inch. Now, looking at the middle portion of that same leg during the second test with the tap changer in the all taps in position, There was no visible movement of the coil. This film records the short circuit action at the bottom of the left hand leg during the first test with the tap changer in the all taps out position. There was some very slight coil movement and movement of one of the leads. The final film records the short circuit action on the lower portion of the same leg during the second test with the tap changer in the all taps in position. While there was some movement of the leads, there was no visible movement of the coil at all. The results demonstrate the importance of testing units like this fully offset at 100% voltage at least once in the all taps out maximum force position. This unit was also given recurrent surge tests between each short circuit test and no significant changes could be observed in the recurrent surge waveforms. In corroboration of these findings, the unit passed all electrical tests in accordance with the ANSI standard, and inspection of the coils revealed no failure of any kind. These are some of the results of General Electric's continuing short circuit development program as it stands today. The knowledge we have gained is already incorporated into a proposed new design standard for General Electric transformers. Written into your transformer specifications, this standard will provide assurance that any transformer you buy is built to meet the rigors of your present and future power systems applications.